So let's take the next 45 minutes or maybe 40 minutes. We'll see how we're at. And just do some of the more artistic geometric drawings that, that we can do. And we'll start with uh, the simplest and for most children, the most difficult drawing, which is to draw the circle. What we'll do is we, we don't have enough time to do all of these drawings from scratch. So um, what I would like is <coughs> take your original drawing and the next step that it will go, and you might just want to write a note here. First step is just the circle. Second step would be to have a series of concentric circles. So within the circle that you've already created, go ahead and draw in a number of smaller <coughs> nested circles. And as David said too, you want to look and see, are they, are they able to start the circle and complete the circle without stopping, <coughs> without having to turn um, to get at it from the other side? Are they able to complete the entire round in one fell swoop? And you might ask them with these concentric circles, see if you can make them all equally spaced. So this, this is requiring just an enormous amount of eye-hand coordination when you get into these concentric circle forms. Yeah, and, and you could do them both ways. With all of those, all those triangular square nesting drawings from yesterday, you can start small and go large and then go, go large and start and, and start large and go small. So it's if you have the time to work with them and go in both directions, it's it's good to do so. Yeah, it seems like it would maybe be using slightly different. Yes, because um, we we just have much more manageability to, to draw a small circle. You know, you have <laughs> you just have so much more uh, linear length to make errors the larger it gets. So if I were to have the kids after they were done with this drawing do a critique, I would not ask what one is the most beautiful. I would ask which one has the most consistent space between one circle and the next. So I would ask very specific questions for them to look at certain things. <clears throat> because later on when we're critiquing something and they say, oh I really like that. And I say, why? And they say, oh just because. Um, it's pretty. So we, we want to, and, and these are good exercises they're in this middle range. They're able to see when things are balanced, when they're true. And it's a, it's a nice beginning step for them to articulate that. So whenever you're doing these exercises, or a painting, or a drawing, it's good to periodically have them all up front or on the floor next to each other, the, the work, and, and, and have them critique the work. And, and at first, you're going to want to pose the questions. And you'll pose them in such a way that, that supports in them that what you're looking for are truths, not subjective opinions. Let's go on. The next drawing, I'd say, besides just doing the circle, which is the most difficult, is the... Um, the nesting circles, this is also called um, the germination series. So 
Uh, with this one, you want to start with a ground line. And the first circle that you draw is going to be small and on the line. And then there will be a series of circles, all which <coughs> share the exact same base as your first circle. So in other words, you're going to have all of these circles growing larger and larger, and this yellow line will be the tangent base line for all of them. This one is really tricky, and I will warn my class ahead of time that you will tend to make your circles flat on the bottom. That's the tendency. So be careful of that. So I might give them just a little warning tip with something that I've seen over time with different classes. This is a really challenging aspect of it. So I might point that out to them that some children have a difficult time getting it lifted up off of that bottom line as the larger it gets. Is this like fourth grade? This is fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much everything I've done today is fifth grade. Yeah. I mean, I didn't teach any geometry in fourth grade. Everything I brought, I brought in fifth grade and beyond. Um, but some teachers indicate um, that, you know, some, some, like a lot of what we did yesterday, is a, it can be appropriate for fourth grade. I think it's more in the European schools. They tend to be a grade ahead of us in a lot of subjects. Like they'll teach perspective drawing in sixth grade instead of seventh grade. So with this, I would also invite the children to imagine the form before they draw it. Have them really see the circle, the next larger circle, on their paper ahead of time. What you'll oftentimes see, I'll draw it in orange, is by the time they get to the outside, their shape looks something like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why it's nice, especially with this drawing, that you've done that work ahead of time so much work about the tangent and how the tangent is only passing through one point. And if they understand that, then when they get to this, they understand no matter how big the circle is, even a very large circle is still only going to sit on that line with one point. Thank you.